this isn't going to work, you're going to fail. You know, I love that, motivates me on more. You know, there's certainly times where I've thought, screw this, but uh, you know, you've got to keep going, right? It sounds cliche, but it was the best education that I had. So ladies and gentlemen, this is James Asquith. He is a, uh, a new friend of mine. He set the world record for being the youngest person to visit every country in the world. That was what, how many years ago? Five years ago, six years ago? Yeah, seems like a lifetime now. Um, five years ago. Uh, so five years yeah. ago now. Um, and now and now he's started his new company. When did you launch hey, Holiday Swap? Sorry, I got a friend coming in right here. No, he's gone. <laughs> so that was uh, about a year and a half ago now. Uh, I wanted to try and kind of create uh, something in travel to make travel cheaper and more affordable for uh, for people. And, you know, it was uh, it was the obvious idea rather than, I guess, kind of sitting there uh, on, on, on a beach and... Uh, I'm in a leaf storm now as well. Um, it's kind of instead of sitting, uh, sitting on a beach and enjoying travel myself, it was the question everyone kept asking was how to get to travel so much and people want to travel more and more. And it's definitely always the recurring theme is, you know, everyone wants to travel more. So it, uh, it made sense to create a concept and a sharing economy platform that allowed that to be possible. And the idea is you can swap your home with somebody else in a different country and make your, your travel more affordable. Yeah, basically, uh, a lot of people compare it to, you know, that film The Holiday with, uh, with Kate Winslet, Cameron Diaz. A lot of co people compare it to that. And I guess imagine that Tinder and Airbnb had a love child and, uh, and you, get, uh, you get what we have at Holiday Swap. That's it. I love it. Why do you care so much about travel? I mean, everybody loves to travel. It's great. Uh, I haven't met so many, too many people who say, like, they hate traveling. But, but you took it to, you know, a whole new level. Why was it so important for you? Um, I mean, look, to be honest, I didn't really have much interest in it myself either. I was 18 years old and uh, had an ex-girlfriend that, that broke up with me and she went traveling somewhere. And I thought, you know what, screw this. I'm going to go travel as well. So I booked a ticket to go and do some volunteer work in Mombasa, actually. Um, it turns out I've still never been to Mombasa, even to this day. Uh, I didn't end up going. I went to Vietnam with, uh, with two of my best friends and did some volunteer work. And I remember getting my backpack when I was going out there and some guys in the shop selling it, saying, get this one. It's going to last you for years. You're going to pick up the travel bug and love it. And, uh, and I was a bit like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm just going for this trip and that'll be that. Went there and, uh, and look, you know, the naive kid that I was at 18, going to Southeast Asia, thinking that I knew it all, probably acting entitled as well, being out there. Uh, you know, I'd have probably hated the guy that I met if I met myself as 18-year-old me. But um, it, it definitely grew me in, in so many ways. And it, was, it sounds cliche, but it was the best education that I had. Um, better than anything I had sitting in a classroom at, at university. And I rarely turned up for university, to be honest. Uh, after that trip, I came back and, and kept booking to, to go traveling and seeing other places. But yeah, I certainly discovered so much about other people, so much about myself as well. Um, so it was, yeah, it, it was definitely the best education I had. I'm curious now, you've seen other countries. You're still pretty young. Do you still want to travel? Is it still a kick? I am probably on the road more now than I was when I was, uh, when I was traveling to every country. I landed back in London yesterday, actually, from, from Sydney. And, uh, and, I, and I'm ready to go again. I fly out of here tomorrow. So, uh, you know, I probably spent about, I'm from London originally, I probably spent about 15, maybe 20 days a year here max now. Um, so I'm on the road more than ever. Definitely, I guess, taking working remotely to a new level. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel something a little bit free every time I, I step on a plane. And it's, it's, it's almost something that I need these days. It's interesting. So I've been going to New York City a lot recently. And I've been to New York, I don't know how many times. I remember the first time I went, it's, it's amazing and huge buildings and just the vibe and the culture totally different. And the last time I went, last weekend was just, ah, eh, I'm back. It's okay. There's always some new things to explore and discover yeah. and see, but, but the, a lot of the newness and the shininess has, has definitely worn off. And I can only imagine for someone like you who's been basically everywhere, <laughs> what, what is the appeal then in going back and discovering again and seeing the same city over and over and over again? What still continues to drive you to do that? Here's a recent story. So I went to Sydney last summer again, um, probably like my third or fourth time in Sydney. And I didn't really like it. It was OK. There was nothing special. I kind of felt like people were a bit demotivated there. And uh, 
the one place that I come back to, like your New York story, and I kind of feel a little bit deflated in some ways is London, to be honest. And the shine has rubbed off a bit for me in London. I've lived here for 27, 28 years. But I was not impressed with Sydney. I was like, I don't really care about going back to Australia too much. And I went back this time and I loved it. Um, so I kind of we fell back in love with Sydney. And the same for Fiji. I just spent a couple of weeks working out in Fiji. And if you'd have asked me a year ago, where's the one place that I want to go, rewind and relax, I'd have said time and time, you know what? I really like the Maldives for what it offers. Yeah, it might not offer the most culture if you're sat on a little you know, five-star island or something, which is what people go there for. But it was kind of the definition for me of, of you know, kicking back, reading a good book, getting some work done, whatever it is. And that wasn't the case for me when I went to the Maldives this time. And Fiji, for example, which I used to think was okay, I went back this time and I just absolutely loved it. And the same with Sydney. So I'm kind of always falling back in and out of love with places. And I guess by moving around all the time, um, I certainly get a different kind of appeal and approach for it. But yeah, I mean, you, I, I guess you go back and you get certain things that are new little pop-ups that you might want to go to and new things to do. But it, it's always been kind of about the, the people that I see, the people that I meet there. And that's always changing. You know, that's always there's always new people that kind of come along and, and opportunities of some sort. So for me, it's as much about kind of the people as it is about the, you know, the buildings around you or the, you know, the nature or whatever the, you know, mm. the stand of appeal of, of, of a place is. So, yeah, that's that's always kind of a moving parameter. I just came back from doing a 90 day tour in the U.S., so we had oh, yeah. 23 cities, 90 days, an entrepreneur speaking tour. Uh, and for me, the thing was the people, like just exactly what you're saying. Sure. I didn't need to see any city. I just wanted to be in the hotel talking to the entrepreneurs and helping them out. So For my sure, connection to people is through entrepreneurship and helping them grow their business. When you're traveling and meeting people, if that's the thing, like you just love meeting the people in different cities. What's the connection point that you form with them that means so much to you? It completely varies by by city by person what you think you can offer someone and you know there are people that sometimes and i guess it's the same for you and and for a lot of us sometimes you just can't explain what it is about someone or something or you know an opportunity that comes along and that opportunity doesn't always necessarily mean um you know in it for yourself or something for your business i do you know i try and and that was the whole concept of why we started Holiday Swap was trying to do something to to give back and uh, allow travel. And, you know, even before we kind of launched the amount of people that I spoke to that said, yeah, you'll need huge scale with this. This will never work. And we've all heard it. We've all heard those people that will turn around in life for any walk of life and say, this isn't going to work. You're going to fail. You know, I love that it motivates me on more. But it, it just completely varies in, in terms of what I think I can offer as well. And uh, and it's not just about giving back in terms of travel with Holiday Swap. It's about giving back in, in terms of what I can do. So I do a lot of I'm doing some work with UNICEF in Yemen at the moment. And that's something that's super exciting for me. You know, if you'd have told me a year and a half ago, a place that you'll probably never go back to, Yemen would be one of them. But, uh, you know, that's a situation where. I went back there last in, in December and um, and it was difficult. And the people there are just absolutely straight up amazing. And uh, and that's somewhere where I feel like they give me as much as I could try and give them through whatever means. And hopefully I'm going back there again next month. And uh, and it's not about what you can take on an individual level from um, the people or a country. It's also, you know, what they can give you. And, and, and that's not necessarily monetary or money wise or, uh, you know, that's personal growth as well. So that's that's what I feel from there. For the people in my audience who are mostly entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs, how do you manage your business? What are some hacks that you have for working remotely? You mentioned you're only in London 20 days a year. It sounds insane. Uh, so what, what are some of the tricks you use to be able to run your company from anywhere in the world? Um, <laughs> a lot of hard work and, and a lot of discipline goes into it. The amount of times I'll go to a place and – you know, I'll get some great suggestions from people saying, hey, go and see this and go and do that. And a lot of the time, um, I just can't because I'm not living my life on holiday necessarily. Sure, it was amazing last week. I was able to wake up and go for a run down the beach in Fiji um, and open my doors and have a beautiful ocean in front of me. But that didn't mean that I could go out and do loads of tours all the time. It meant that that was my view and my setting. And, uh, and it meant getting on with working for 12 to 14 hours a day every single day. Um, so I barely left where I was at. And and it, you kind of have to understand that, uh, you know, sure, you you might go for a couple of drinks and a night out with some friends, for example. But, hey, if you've got to leave at 8 p.m. because you've got a call to be on and you've got something to do the next day or even that night, that's just the nature of, 
of, of, of the business is always working and you know you're going to get a lot of kicks and uh, and a lot of setbacks but but stay at it that's probably the the biggest suggestion i could have in terms of a, a, a business there's you know there's certainly times where i've thought screw this but uh yeah you got to keep going right are you building a team of people under you or you just want to be solopreneur no, absolutely not. It's I mean, the team is what makes it for sure, and it doesn't matter about what my ownership is or ever will be in the company. It doesn't matter about my position, right? You know, I work for every single user that's on there. I think our team is we've got twenty six people now, um, so we've grown to you know a decent sized team, and certainly it's everyone's interconnected, and that is exactly what keeps everything running um with the, with this company being able to turn around and and know that people can you know work as hard as you will be and will be committed and you know everyone makes mistakes and that's the main thing like when i worked uh, i was in banking for a little bit as well after i finished college and uh and it was a, a nicely paying job but god i must have been an absolute nightmare for, uh, for 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 people to manage uh manage above me but you know if you're kind of all aligned on the same um same goal and i've never been so passionate about something with this company it's amazing to have people on the team that, that kind of see that passion as well, where where we're going and have, have the same motivation as me. So um, that makes it all easier to align, I guess. So somebody is watching and they're a banker or they have a nice job. They may not be, you know, super senior yet, but they're on the path. Like, hey, being a banker in London is a good job to have. To then have this dream to go off and do something else and have the courage to leave the safe steady job behind what advice would you have for them take a risk um and it is a massive risk because you know i know a lot of people that work in in banking and finance particularly and yeah sure on paper like it looks like you might be walking home with a decent amount of money but you know especially if you're in somewhere like new york or in london you are also spending that money right you're spending that money to almost keep a, a vision and a, and a look of who you are where you're going out who you're hanging around with um, and, uh, and most people I know in that industry in a heartbeat would turn around and say, well, yeah, you know what? Like I'd take uh, a fraction of the money for the ability to be remote or to be able to go and do things because, you know, if you're working your ass off all year round for that kind of 20% of the time where you're able to enjoy it, whether that's weekends or whether that's that precious time on holiday, if you want to go somewhere solo, if you want to go somewhere with friends or family, whatever it is, um, you know, you're basically working for, the, the thing that frustrates me the most is when I hear people say, oh, they're working towards retirement, whenever that might be, because, um, you know, you're not enjoying your life, right? What are you going to do? Wish away your life until you're 65? So, yeah, you've, you've, you've got to enjoy what you do. And, and honestly, it's not just about the amount of money that's coming in each month. Um, it, it's, it's about the whole package. And it's tough to see that um, when you might be earning a decent amount. But, yeah, it's, it's a risk and you've got to back yourself. Do you, when you come back to London... I mean, if you're only there 20 days a year, do you have a place? Do you just stay with your parents? Do you go Airbnb? Like, what do you do when you come back home? Uh, definitely not Airbnb. They are the enemy. Um, but, uh, in, I mean, it, it varies. Um, usually I, uh, I'll, I'll either stay with friends. Um, my parents live outside of London, so and they're in a pretty small place. So, uh, yeah, nothing certainly in terms of the travel to start with came from my, uh, my parents' money. But, uh, yeah, usually with friends, sometimes if it's last minute, I'll grab a hotel. Um, it varies the whole time. Why is Airbnb the enemy? Well, look, I mean, the, the whole point of what we're trying to do with Holiday Swap is, you know, 90, 95% of people probably rent their place, right? And that means you can't put your place on Airbnb because you're subletting and you break a contract. If you sublet, which is what Airbnb is, essentially, um, you're breaking a rental agreement. And, you know, the whole point for us is it's negative pressure, upwards pressure on rent prices, upwards pressure on property prices as well in a region, because particularly people that are buying second, third homes who have the ability to do so and then make money by putting it on Airbnb. And I, I guess a couple of years ago, things were great. You could get some really good deals in there and you still can. For sure, you still can. Um, however, I feel like the prices have been increasing. Um, whilst getting very much closer to hotel prices without necessarily offering the facilities. Sure, you get to be able to, um, uh, you know, have your own personal space, probably more than a hotel. Um, but, it, it, you know, the, the whole concept of Holly Swap allows you, with the bed that you sleep in at night, to be able to go and travel more of the world. And rather than turning around and just, you know, being the user 
on Airbnb, which is what 98% of people are, by going and paying a price for, you know, the stock of people that actually are, are able to profit from their properties. Um, you're able to use your property to not have to pay essentially any cash price because your bed is the, is the cash that you'd have paid. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're not the enemy, but, uh, you know, the concept that we're trying to do is, uh, is certainly trying to take out the inefficiency of the market for everyone that's not allowed to put their place on as a host on Airbnb, which is most people. So if somebody has a room or, you know, they have a flat in London and they want to say, hey, I'm going to put this on holiday swap. I want to go to Mexico and I want to I want to swap. So you come to my place and I come to yours. How do you how do you make that connection happen? How do you make sure it's fair? What are the logistics? So basically, that's why a lot of people kind of say it's a combination of, you know, Airbnb and Tinder. So imagine the part with Tinder, for example, where, you know, someone might go and you, you think, hey, what's my worth? What am I looking for? Um, look at someone's bio and say, oh, I'm interested in like meeting up with that person. It's exactly the same on Holiday Swap. You go and put your preferences in. You say, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z in Mexico. Um, you know, you might have a really gorgeous one bed studio in, in London and think that you deserve a two bed, you know, um, apartment on the outskirts of Mexico City for that, for example. It's completely up to you and it's completely up to the other person how they think that they value their place and how they value yours. If you match up, you can swap. Um, it's that simple. Love it. And, and you're in almost every country, right? Like 180 something countries. What are you in? Uh, swap? 100, 185. Yeah. This, and how many countries are there? 196? Yeah, 196. There you go. Almost every country. So, so it's only 11 in the world that you can't go to if you want a holiday swap. Otherwise, you're good to go. Pretty much. I love it. For somebody who um, is thinking about getting their travel expenses down, so beyond just doing holiday swap is a great first step. Like, hey, you already have a home. Trade it with somebody else. What are some other tips, advice that you'd have for somebody getting started on their worldwide travel tour? Work hard to start with. Um, take risks as well. It kind of goes back to the same notion of, uh, of, of people wanting to go and change what they do, maybe in terms of a job. Um, you know, I did a, a massive amount of it on a shoestring. Um, worked as I went along. You know, got an airfare to South America with probably only you know 500 bucks in my pocket when I went out there, and backed that I'd be able to figure it out as I went along. Um, you know, I was doing some some weird jobs out in South America. Um, working at a beach bar and, you know, working at hostels where I get my bedding paid for, get a meal paid for. And I think I got some, you know, pocket money, as it was termed, which uh, was maybe only a couple of dollars a day. But, you know, it was it was enough because my expenses were almost zero. I got, you know, free drinks at the bar, free food and free bedding. And uh, and I had a, a, a damn right load of fun as well um, working on a beach bar and made some, some good friends and contacts that I still stay in touch with today. So, you know, a lot of the time it's backing yourself working hard for it as well um you know i i obviously hear a lot of people that say hey they you know they don't necessarily have the money to be able to do it and uh you know unless you're very fortunate and some people are to you know i guess be born into money or be lucky in some ways uh, unfortunately there's not really a, a, a some major hack that i can tell you because if there was a hack in terms of being able to make uh, you, you know some golden ticket to go and travel for cheaper or whatever it might be then it wouldn't be for very long because everyone would do it and then it wouldn't be special anymore um so it, yeah unfortunately it really does come down to in my really strong opinion working hard and you know i work harder now than i think i ever did um and i'll continue to do so because we're trying to build something that that is meaningful and changes travel so this was five years ago is there anything that's changed in the past five years that if you if you were just starting off now that you would do it differently in terms of finding ways to make money? Would it still be the same thing now that just going and working at beach bars or anything else or has something happened in the past five years that may make it easier? I, I think there's more opportunities now. Um, I think in some ways it's a bit of a golden age in terms of, you know, what you can do. I met a guy that was 19 years old in Sydney and he makes a good amount of money from his aviation, you know, spotting blog, for example. Um, when I first started out traveling, um, no one was monetizing Instagram. Instagram wasn't really a thing. Um, I didn't even get Instagram until three years ago or something. So I certainly wasn't using it during my travels. Um, I was rarely documenting it as well. Um, and there was certainly kind of, you know, I'm not saying you have to necessarily be completely in the spotlight to be able to monetize um, what you're doing. But I think that there's so many different options now. We even, you know, at Holly Swap, we hire people that are working remotely and moving around. And, uh, you know, there is now an option to be able, there's plenty of websites that contract people to do 
um, various little odd jobs, um, whether it's, I don't know, even replying to like customer service emails or whatever. The, the options now, um, I think globally, are absolutely huge to be able to, to, to use modern tech and where we're at. Uh, and I think that that only keeps, uh, keeps increasing as, as the years go on. So what would you do? James, starting over 2019, London hasn't seen anything yet, wants to go see the world. Where's your first stop and, and what would you do to try to support yourself? Do you know what? I'd love to say I wouldn't do any differently. Um, I'd love to say I'd do the same route again if I knew it would turn out this way. I'd probably sit down at the start and have a serious conversation with myself and uh, tell myself to grow up over the first year or two maybe that I was traveling. Um, and uh, I mean, apart from that, it's, uh, I'd, I'd certainly, I'd probably hopefully do the same route again um, and, and maybe be able to, to work more remotely instead of, you know, necessarily just, you know, traditionally go somewhere and do this job in a, in a beach bar, do this job here. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think that there's, that there'd be more opportunity to be able to do that. Maybe I could have stayed in a few slightly nicer places, but I guess that comes with some of the, some of the awful places I've slept in a, a novelty of that as part of the story that wouldn't, wouldn't change. Now I'm, I'm based in Toronto, Canada. So when you hit Canada, where did you come? It's a big country. Where, where, where did you come that would count as your, your stop in Canada? Well, I certainly don't think I did it the, should we say, easy way. Um, you know, a few people, I get a bunch of messages every week from people that are trying to go to every country and, you know, beat the record, etc. And, and the benefit that I had was I set the record, um, which means I wasn't chasing anyone. I was able to do it on my own time, on my own terms. And I did it because I genuinely love traveling. I didn't set out to do it as well at the start. It's probably when I've been to about 140 countries that I thought, hey, you know what, I could probably do this. So a lot of people now are kind of a very intent, it seems, on actually getting the record, um, which in some ways is a shame because I think you lose track of why you're traveling and why you want to do it. Um, so, yeah, I certainly didn't just kind of like step foot in a country, say, you know, been to Toronto, tick box, seen Canada. I think when I was there, I spent a bunch of time in the um, around Montreal. I remember going to all, all the lakes and, uh, and everything that was around Montreal. I went to Toronto, Vancouver um whistler Banff as well so uh, i saw a decent bit of canada i think there's a lot more for me to, to still go back and see and i certainly feel like in lots of ways i'm still just getting started cool man well if you're ever back in toronto let me know next, next month next beers on me um i'll, I'll cool. be there well, next month I love, are you really you're coming to toronto next I month i am i am what's indeed. what's happening in toronto um i need to see someone there for a for a meeting for work so uh, okay i'm only going to be there for two days but uh yeah definitely Okay, we'll see. We'll, we'll DM afterwards. If people want to hear your story, follow you, learn about Holiday Swap. I know, you know we're crunched on time now. Where, where do you want people to go? What's the next step to dive into your world? Um, I, I guess go, uh, go check out Holiday Swap. See if, uh, see if you like it. See if you can go and save some money on your accommodation. And, uh, and if you don't, just uh, pretend it never happened in the first place. <laughs> Amazing. James, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on, sharing your wisdom, your story. Thank you. Hey man, thanks very much for having me. All right, Cheers, buddy. much love. If you want to learn how you can save the world with Tom Kosigen, check out my video link right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. We shouldn't have to think about recycling. We should just make products that are recyclable. We need to get on this now, right? We, we can't wait another 50 years.